Let's talk about the Sage Advice Compendium. If you're unfamiliar with this, um, well, I'm not going to do like a full overview of what the Sage Advice Compendium itself is, but if we jump over here to an article that Wizards of the Coast released yesterday on the 1st of October, we have a new Sage Advice Compendium. This is basically your should be your go to place for any rules based questions that you might have. It is a compilation of the most frequently asked questions by the D&D community in any form or things that the developers themselves realized are a little bit gray or confusing and might need clarification. They'll take it and they'll go ahead and answer all those questions, compile them into a document. And it might not be a bad idea to have these on hand or print them and just keep them in the back of your player's handbook or whatever. But this is the newest version. So I'm going to say not all the time, but I've seen a lot lately. Whenever I bring something up and people will be like, I don't think it works that way. Some cases they're right, but more often than not, I've already vetted those answers via the Sage Advice Compendium and that answers them for me. This new document, by the way, there's a link to this in the description as well. We'll have all of the latest errata for all of the different books here. You can see them all specifically for Curse of Strahd, Ghosts of Salt Marsh, Storm King's Thunder, Tomb of Annihilation, and Volo's Guide to Monsters. We've already seen the Curse of Strahd and the uh, the Tomb of Annihilation ones. They were already out on D&D Beyond. Um, Storm King's Thunder looks like it was a couple of wording changes and the swapping of Crag Cat to Monstrosity from Beast. Volo's Guide, um, we're going to do a separate video on that. And then um, Ghosts of Salt Marsh looks like it's mostly text changes. Um, so anyway, the thing is, they're all going to have this right here, which shows new in parentheses. So they're going to have that. So we're basically just going to sort by the word new. And we're going to go through and look at all the new things that were confirmed, adjusted, or otherwise here in this Sage Advice Compendium. So. All right. Uh, we're talking, seeing it's broken up into different sections, character creation, racial traits, and so on. So the first new one we officially have is how long do a shifter's temporary hit points last? They mean when they use their shifting capability to get temporary hit points. Unless a feature says otherwise, temporary hit points last until you finish a long rest. This is an interesting one. Does all magical darkness block dark vision? Magical darkness blocks dark vision only... Folks, keep this in mind only if the rules, text, or a particular instance of that darkness says so. For example, the darkness spell specifies that it produces a magical darkness that obstructs dark vision. That obstruction is a feature of the spell, not of magical darkness in general. So I don't know what other versions of that kind of stuff is out there. But because the darkness spell specifically states that it blocks dark vision, it does. If another spell out there creates darkness, even if it's generated magically, if it doesn't state that it blocks dark vision, it doesn't. That was news to me. All right, next up we have, I don't know why it skipped all the way there and not to here. Um... But we have also all the Artificer stuff is going to be new because they weren't really covered in the last one. What is the timing of Flash of Genius? Uh, you use Flash of Genius immediately after the triggering D20 is rolled and before any of the effects of the rules are applied. Unless a rule tells you otherwise, a reaction occurs immediately after its trigger. Which action is used to activate a spell storing item? Activating a spell storing item uses the use an object interaction. Um, can an artificer dismiss one of their infusions on an object early? No. An infusion lasts until one of the circumstances described in the infusing the item section of the in, uh, infuse item feature. So you can't end an infusion early. All right, next up we have, does a College of Valor's combat inspiration add to the damage of an attack count as a damage die for the purposes of critical hits? Yes. So if a College of Valor Bard gives you a Bardic Inspiration and you choose to roll it on damage, if you wait to roll it when you roll a, a crit, that damage die is doubled. So there you go. If a Grave Domain Cleric casts a spell that restores hit points to multiple creatures, 
and one of those creatures has zero hit points, does the spell restore the maximum number of hit points to all targets? Are all targets of the spell? No, only a creature with zero hit points gets the benefit. So um, a Grave Domain Cleric, when they're healing someone from zero hit points, heals them the max amount. So even if you were mass cure wounds and a whole bunch of people and only one of them was at zero, only that one gets the full healing. But that's interesting because one healing spell could heal the same amount of people for different amounts. Well, now I'm just scrolling because it skipped over those first few and now I'm worried we're going to miss something. All right, now we are into Fighter. Can the disarming attack maneuver disarm a creature of a shield it has donned? No, disarming attack forces a creature to drop an object they're holding. Donned shields count as donned. They don't count as being held. So something to consider. All right, next up we have Paladin. Can Paladin use Divine Smite when they hit using an unarmed strike? I hate this so much, right? No, Divine Strike requires a melee attack using a weapon. The rules don't consider unarmed strikes to be weapons. Here's the tricky part, though. An unarmed strike is a melee weapon attack, but it is not an attack with a melee weapon. I give that to you one more time, folks. An unarmed strike is a melee weapon attack, but not an attack with a melee weapon. There is a specific uh, uh, terminology there. So Divine Smite requires a melee attack using a weapon, but a melee weapon attack is any... It's just very funky. Anyway. Uh, Ranger. Does a Monster uh, Slayer Ranger's supernatural defense feature apply if a creature damages the Ranger, thus causing the Ranger to make a constitution saving throw to maintain concentration on a spell? Yes. All right. Moving along. Uh, does the Thief uh, Rogue's use magic device feature allow them to use scrolls? Yes, it does. Can a thief use fast hands to use or apply poisons? Yes, administering a poison uses the use an object interaction. Um, all right, sorcerer doesn't a warlock. Anything for the wizard? Wizard. Can minor conjuration create a copy of a book complete with all its text if the wizard hasn't seen the text at all? Excuse me. No, in the case of a multi-part object, the intent is that you must have seen all parts of the object to duplicate those parts in the case of a book it would only have the cover and the duplicate then the duplicate created will be a copy of the cover and the pages inside will be blank can a school of divination wizard on the ethereal plane use portent on a creature that the wizard can see on the material plane yes portent requires you to be able to see the creature it has no range restriction and for a wizard to cast a ritual spell contained in their spell book do they need to read from the book or use it as part of the ritual? This was news to me. No. As written, the rule doesn't require you to read from the book. The narrative intent, however, is that the wizard is reading from their book, but the only mechanical requirement is that the wizard has the spell in their spell book, which is interesting because I thought that was the, the downside to doing ritual spells from your spell book if not prepared was you had to read them. But no, you don't have to. You just have to have them in there, which is crazy. You don't even need to have your spell book at all. Um, okay. Nothing of feats. We don't have anything new in the feet section here. Mm, all right, ability check. Nope, adventuring. The frightened condition says, while the source of its fear is within line of sight, does that mean you have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks even if the source is invisible? but you have clear line to its space. No, if you can't see something, it's not within your line of sight. Speaking of line of sight, the game uses the English meaning of the term, which means no special, uh, which has no special meaning in the rules. Does casting a spell while taking a short rest interrupt the short rest? Yes, spell casting is more strenuous than activities listed on 186 of the player's handbook, eating, drinking, reading, and tending to wounds. Let's just skip ahead and see. Oh, okay, now it's going to pull the Artificer. Okay. We saw that. Moving along. Okay. Um, okay, so this is an ability check. So jump into the next page. We already did that one. Okay. It, oh, see, this is annoying because it's, it's not going in order. So I want to go in order to make sure we don't miss anything. Uh, okay, keeping keeping heading down the list here. Um, 
Okay, our natural here's here's kind of to the point I was making before. Our natural weapons considered weapons. Things designated as weapons by the rules, including natural weapons, are indeed weapons. In contrast, unarmed strikes are not weapons. They are something you do with an unarmed part of your body. Can I make an attack with one weapon, then draw a second weapon with my other hand and qualify to use two-weapon fighting? To use the two-weapon fighting bonus action, you must have both weapons in hand when you make the first attack. If you're instead fighting with two or more weapons as part of the extra attack feature, the rule for the two-weapon fighting bonus action doesn't apply. The rule for that bonus action applies only to itself, not uh, to any other use of two or more weapons in the game. If I'm concentrating on a spell and I cast another spell that requires concentration, when does concentration end on the first spell? If you're concentrating on a spell, your concentration on it ends immediately when you start casting another spell that requires concentration. Um, okay, moving along. Wait, okay. Can I cast Animate Dead on the humanoid shape corpse of an undead creature such as a zombie or a ghast? No. Animate Dead targets only the corpse of creatures that have the humanoid creature type. Does casting animate objects during a time stop spell end the time stop? No, commanding the newly created creatures with your bonus action does end the time stop, however. Can a creature under the effect of compelled duel teleport more than 30 feet away from the caster? No, you can't move farther than 30 feet away from the caster of compelled duel by any means, including teleportation. Can conjure animals conjure a swarm? No, conjure animals individual uh, summons individual creatures and swarms are groups of creatures. Does counterspell target the caster or the spell they're trying to counter? Again, counterspell targets the other spell caster. I've said this before, but if you don't target, you don't counterspell the fireball. You counterspell the caster casting the fireball. Um. If a wizard with unerred to undeath spends hit dice to raise the hit point maximum of a homunculus created by the create homunculus spell, does it decrease the wizard's hit point maximum? Spending the hit point spending the hit dice affects the homunculus as described in the spell, but the wizard's hit point maximum isn't decreased. All right. Um, when you dismiss the familiar, you conjure with the find familiar spell to its pocket dimension. Can it take objects it's wearing or carrying with it? No, the intent to find familiar is that any objects are left behind when the familiar vanishes. This intent will be reflected in future printings of the player's handbook. I'm assuming they're going to do the same thing for find steed as well. Uh, if you dismiss your steed, it doesn't take things with it. Uh, when a creature successfully saves against Guardian of Faith, takes 10 radiant damage, how much does that count against the total amount of damage the spell can deal? Is it 20 because that's how much it dealt? Uh, or is it 10 because that's how much the target took? It says it dealt 10 damage to the creature, so 10 damage is subtracted from the total. Okay. Misty Step doesn't say the caster can bring worn or carried uh, equipment with them. Uh, are they intended to leave everything, including their clothes, behind? No, the caster's worn and carried equipment are intended to go with them. Some teleportation effects do specify that you teleport with your gear. Such, speci uh, such specification is an example of a rule being needlessly fastidious, since no teleportation effect in the game assumes that you teleport without your clothes, just as the general movement rules don't assume that you drop everything when you walk. What happens to objects brought inside and left inside Morden Canaan's magnificent mansion when it ends? The intent is that the spell uh, the objects are ejected from the mansion when the spell ends and appear in an unoccupied space closest to where the door was. This intent will be reflected in future printings, printings of the player's handbook. If a creature under the effects of polymorph takes enough fire damage to revert them to their true form, and that form has fire resistance, does the true form take the full remaining damage or half damage due to resistance? When the creature reverts to its original true form, uh, any leftover damage is subtracted to that form's damage resist- er, is subject to that form's damage resistance, if any. Can a creature under the effects of Polymorph have other spells cast on them, or are those game statistics also replaced by those of the beast form? Polymorph replaces only the target character's sheet or stat block with the stat block of the chosen form. Other effects, such as other spells, still exist. What happens if I'm Polymorph for a while shaped into a creature with fewer than 100 hit points and I'm targeted by the power word kill spell? You die. 
I like that nice and simple. Can I hand Shadow Blade to another PC? It only said the blade dissipates as I throw or drop it. No, the intent of the blade vanishes when you let go of it. That's what's meant by the meaning uh, of the word drop. If a spellcaster is affected by slow, it takes two turns to finish casting a spell. What happens if their target has moved out of range or out of sight? You choose the target of a spell when you complete the casting, not when you start it. Uh, if you are affecting a target with telekinesis and an ally put you inside Odaluke's resilient sphere, can you continue, continue affecting the target or other targets with the existing telekinesis spell? You can maintain your telekinetic grip on a target you were already affecting, but you can't affect a new target. The sphere provides total cover that stops you from targeting anything outside it. If two creatures are under the effect of Tether Essence and they are both damaged by an area of effect fell, such as a Dragon's Breath, do they take the damage twice? Yes. And we're into the monster section. Um, since game uh, features of the same name don't stack, does that mean a target can't be affected by a Shadow's Strength Drain more than once between short rests? The intended function of the strength drain is that it stacks with itself as signaled by the fact that you die if your strength is reduced to zero by it. Does a Goth uh, devour magic eye ray and a creature's and a creature's attunement to an attuned magic item uh, the ray effect? No. Can a creature that burrows grapple a target and drag them into the ground by burrowing? No, a burrowing creature, uh, creature can drag another creature with them only if they have the ability to leave a tunnel. For example, a purple worm has the tunneler feet or tunneler trait, so it can drag a grappled creature into a tunnel it creates when burrowing. Conversely, an earth elemental can't drag a creature into the ground with it. Uh, can a hydra use reactive heads to make multiple opportunity attacks against one creature at the same time when it provokes? Yes, for that reason, we recommend taking the disengage action when you're trying to move away from a hydra. Now we're into magic items. Does the Ring of the Ram use spell attacks or weapon attacks? The text doesn't specify the attack of the Ring of the Ram is a ranged spell attack. Future printings of the DMG will reflect this. When using Rope of Entanglement, do I keep a whole, uh, do I keep holding one end in my hand or does the entire rope wrap around the target? You are still holding the rope while the other end entangles the target. Can a Sphere of Annihilation enter a Leoman's Tiny Hut? Yes, the Sphere destroys the dome. Can you gain the magic? This one was interesting to me. Can you gain the magical bonus of a plus two shield if you are holding the shield without taking an action to don it? Yes, but only the magical plus two, which says you gain it when holding the shield. You gain the shield's base AC bonuses only if you take your action to don the shield as normal. And if a character hits a monk with a dwarven thrower and the monk uses deflect missiles, does the hammer return to the attacker first or can the monk catch it? And the answer is the monk can catch it. So there you go, folks. That is the newest Sage Advice Compendium. I'm just clicking through right now to make sure we didn't miss any. Looks like there's a total of around 50 or so new things added to this rules clarifications. And you could see some of those I could definitely see having been brought up. I think one even happened just recently on a critical role where they were talking about uh uh or or it's definitely happened on critical role before anyway where they're like what happens if you bring something into a magnificent mansion and you leave it there to what happens to it. And well now it's answered it's going to be updated in the player's handbook going forward. Those things are expelled when happened. I know I personally have dealt with the concept of a fine familiar and fine steed. Can I like put saddlebags on my fine steed and put stuff in it and then dismiss it to its dimension as a way to get stuff out of here to like so that we can't be found out for stealing something or taking something? That's going to be clarified. Um, but yeah, it looks like uh, overall just general rules clarifications, making things a little bit easier to understand. Uh, and that is, again, a quick overview for people unfamiliar about the Sage Advice Compendium. It's a document. It exists for free. It's out there. You can download it on the Wizards of the Coast website. It is also on D&D Beyond as well. You can check it out over there. Uh, and then again, there is also the errata at the start of this showcasing all of the different things. So if you have questions about a specific rule, probably regarding, I'm going to say, a certain spell of some kind. For example, there are multiple... Uh, answers in there regarding the spell counterspell. I think there's 11 different things talking about counterspells or something close to that. 
Uh, you can go look up questions about Counterspell. How does Dispel Magic work? How do certain other abilities interact? They have a section for each specific race, or sorry, for races, character classes, you know, feats and so on. You know, if you're curious about how a certain feat you have interacts with another feat, it might be in there and already answered. Again, these are frequently asked questions that the, the Wizards of the Coast team said, we need to compile these together into a singular place where people can go and reference them if need be. So that's a reason why you should go and check this out. I may be doing a couple small videos containing some other specific things because I've seen them come up in questions recently. Uh, so let me know. Did you see anything in the Sage Advice Compendium this go around that really kind of shocked you or, or was a surprise to you? You didn't expect to see that coming? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Uh, two other things real quick before I go. My Icewind Dale Rhyme of the Frost Maiden giveaway is still going on. It goes on for about another two weeks. Uh, also, uh, I'll put a link to the Kickstarter from Jetpack 7 that I'm involved in as a consultant and maybe a writer if stretch goals get high enough uh, if you want to go and check that out. And yes, the 50k giveaway, I just had a really good meeting last week with some friends of mine who make a bunch of cool stuff in the D&D community to get some more fun things in to be able uh, to finalize that and get a post uh, out to all of you. Uh, so a lot of fun stuff coming on the channel in the next couple of weeks, couple of days. So be sure to stay tuned. Thank you again to the patrons of uh, mine over on Patreon for continuing to support me and the channel and voting every week or every two weeks about what the next top 10 videos should be. And I will see you all next time.